Yes. You guys, let's get this show on the road. Let's talk about, uh, let me throw a quick commercial in here and then we're going to jump into some news. I have some interesting stories I want to share with you guys. You know, I have the 90 PT program and tonight, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about, you may hear a little bit of the 90 PT in it. The 90 PT is, um, it's an a 12 month program subscription based this the red train i call it just i call this the red train or the red line um is actually going away in about a month or so so you won't be able to get in at the 190 dollar price you'll have to catch the blue train we, we're taking this one out of service it'll come back next year so we cover sales marketing social media lighting education all kinds of stuff there are some people that are in the program that that, that are on right now ask them about it it's deep that's all I can tell you. It's deep. We going in. So 90 PT, it's $190 a year. You pay up front and uh, you, you just you watch videos. On this particular program, you only get to watch three times, literally three times. And it's every Saturday at 9 p.m., 9 a.m. And it's the Saturday following. And it's uh, so far, this program is working pretty well. Let's jump into some news and se- some news and technology, you guys. I, I, you know, um I ran into some really interesting news today and I want to share that with you guys. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you, I actually have a news site. I don't know if I told you guys this and and I haven't mentioned it, but it's called F stop. And now you've probably seen it and I just brought it up to speed. You know, I'm introducing all of this new uh, information so that you guys can stay abreast and so that we can stay abreast of what's going on. So this is my daily newspaper. It comes out at 10 a.m. Pacific standard time. It's called F stop it now. And you know that it, it's it's named for that reason it has a lot of connotation to it, but um, there's some interesting stories on here, and I actually curate this, you guys. I actually curate this for the stories that you see on here, um, and then they'll slip slip a few in on me. But um, here's one that I thought was real interesting in the technology section. Sony plans to release a 150 megapixel medium format sensor. I don't know if you if you know this or not, but Sony actually makes a lot of the sensors for a lot of the camera manufacturers. Definitely Nikon. So they're going to introduce a 150 megapixel 150 megapixel medium format sensor in 2018. And then the other thing I thought was really interesting, and I kind of knew this, and you might even want to read this story because uh, I think it's I think it's interesting, especially if you're trying to use teleconverters, which is basically just a, a fancy name for uh, a magnifier. You got to read the pros and cons on this. This is a real interesting story. Um, in terms of the pros and cons I went right to the pros and cons and that's what I like about a good story tell me the pros and cons of using it and here are some of the biggest as you can see there's three pros and four four disadvantages I don't know that doesn't weigh pretty heavy there you guys and on the good side but you lose a stop of light and then if you're using a two times magnification you're losing two times the light which means that if you shoot if you shoot at 2.8 you now got to shoot at uh, five six so you're losing all that that stop right there um, they're not compatible with most autofocus and the focal length increases you guys but the quality decreases and that's what I want you to know about that so take a look it's F so it's the website here is news dot F stop it now dot com and that that'll take you to um, the information that I curate is called F Stop It Now, and uh, it goes all the way down. And you can even see some of the tweets that are going on as well. I have those in here, uh, tips on live streaming. So it's a, and you know, I've actually had this for years, you guys, believe it or not. Um, I've had this, and, I, and I've been just working it for years. So a uh, good source of information for you. And moving on. Does that sound like a good deal for you guys? That sound like a good deal? News.fstopitnow.com. I told you at the beginning of the year I was going to hit you with some, hit you with a lot of stuff. I was not kidding. I was not kidding, you guys. There it is, right there. Okay, so let's let's get into this whole lighting thing. Are you guys, guys want to talk about lighting tonight? Is lighting going to be an interesting topic for you? I want you to put in. Let's go. 3.3. 3.3. If lighting is going to be something that you're really interested in. I, you know, Tories, every day is a super busy day. <laughs> every day is a super busy day from sun up to sundown. And, you know, I might be in the studio f- up until 11, 12 o'clock sometimes. 
and then it starts all over again. That's why I take massive vacations. Okay, you guys, here we go. So lighting is, uh, I'm, this in this first diagram, I want to show you this lighting setup here. And uh, how, how many people do event photography? How many of you guys are doing event photography? Because we're going to go from event photography on over to portraiture. How many, I want you to put up a Wi-Fi if you do event photography. Okay, I'm going to show you a lighting setup that's foolproof because what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm I'm going to draw you into a print on site at some point, hopefully, where you're you're actually printing on site to increase your revenues in your event photography, and I'm going to show you a lighting setup that's foolproof that works with on site printing perfectly, and all you have to do is just follow these simple rules and you will be on your way now looking at this diagram as you can see the umbrellas are 45 degrees they're at the corner of the backdrop and you see I have everybody in the gap so there's five people there they're in the gap and this is all you have to remember is 45 degrees once you pull the backdrop out this is a 10 by 20 so that means it's 10 feet wide by 20 feet long and you put the people in the middle not up against the backdrop and what's happening is that light is gonna spread and cover all the area it is really simple matter of fact I could look at this and tell you this is probably an f10 f-stop just knowing and having done it so much f10 f11 you know if the people are real bright skin we could go oh we probably wouldn't want to go more than 11 but we got depth of field we're gonna cover the rows and and this is gonna be magical this is gonna work great for the printer this is gonna be approximately and it kinda of depends on the camera you're shooting cuz cannons tend to be yes the whoa, 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 whoa MJ hold on hold on I gotta correct that right there you guys light does not wrap a lot of people don't know that light does not wrap around objects when it hits the surface it stops and reflects and there's there's a scientific term called the pen and pen umbra so you should definitely read those so light does not wrap and if you hear a photographer saying that they're gonna be incorrect so keep that in mind okay so here's the key to this this setup requires 60 inch umbrellas and at least 750 watt second lights or it's gonna throw off the entire exposure now you guys I'm gonna say that again this setup requires 60 inch umbrellas 60 inch Westcott umbrellas you're gonna put them at 45 degrees you're gonna use 750 watt second lights with reflectors the reflectors being the cone that goes into it so that you can direct as much light to the center and back out so this is called reflective lighting reflective lighting is this making sense for you guys are you with me right here I want you to drop in thank you for the hearts by the way I want you guys to drop in uh, I would use silver I would use silver because silver is gonna give you more action <laughs> more light action Silver is going to give you more action, you guys. And if you look at my photographs and you notice they're crispy, I'm going to tell you it's because of that silver lining on the inside. I'm very meticulous about the inside of the boxes. Any kind of modifier I'm using, I'm very meticulous about that. Every photographer has their thing. So I want you to remember that lighting setup. Will this work for you guys? I hope this will. Will this work for you? I want you to drop in. Let's go 4.4. 4.4. Let's go. My name is Keith B. Dixon. I'm a photographer. I'm a corporate event photographer. Large scale, you guys. Thank you. If you see me looking over here or over here, I'm just looking at your comments. I am looking at your comments. 4.4. Thank you. My name is Keith B. Dixon again. You are in the Kilo Bravo Delta Zone. It's official 7, 7.05 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, you guys. All day, every day. I'm on here giving away all kinds of stuff. Um, I think it's a sin sometimes. No, it ain't. All right, let's go. Um, so here's another image. I want to talk about lighting here, you guys, on this next one. And um, you know what? I'm going, to make a, I'm going to make an adjustment on the fly here. Give me a quick second. I'm going to make an adjustment because I think that's going to... Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's an image I photographed. Uh, this this guy's a rapper. This was his style. And you're going to notice there's there's uh, basically 
a specular light on his glasses. He actually wanted that in there. I was going to change it out and put something else in, but he, he liked it like that. Um, here's what I want you to know about this photo. Light will shape whatever it touches, depending on how you modify it. Light will shape depending on what it touches and how you modify it. It also depends on the intensity as well. So as you can see, I'm separating off the side of his face I'm to draw attention in, right? Where, um, where the broad side of his face is lit. Um, and then the, the edge light, you can see separated off the background. Remember, I want you guys, and I'm going to beat this up today. Um, I want you to remember to always separate your subjects off the background. Please do not shoot your subjects without separating them. It is, that is a fundamental rule. It's really not designed to be broken. And when it is broken, it is very difficult to pull off. There are not very many photographers. I know some master photographers who have tried it and didn't score or fare very well in trying to pull off that technique. So you got to be real careful with it. So you always want to just start off by separating them off the background. Now, um, this is really tricky because the other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to show the back of the hand or the, the hand open. As you can see, he's turned to the side. And I caught him in motion right here. That was the general ideal. So and he had a stylist who styled him. I wanted the light to be as natural. And then I wanted to bring a hard change to his face because we see where he's raising his hand that's always going to cast a shadow so you got to make sure that there's a light in there so you don't cast a shadow back on his face and then you got some irregular pattern all right now this is all leading up to something very special that i'm going to show you all right run through these images now here's another image and here's what i want you to to know about this particular image there's something called a transfer edge of light. Transfer edge of light. And as you can see, um, I'm going for the, the, there's almost a Rembrandt there. You can see the texture on the side of his head. But you, you want to you wanna put that light on so smooth. I want you guys to think about this as if it was your first date with your significant other. You was trying to be so smooth. That's how you want your light to roll. You know what I'm saying? The hard change of life for me is a disruption and symbolizes a, a lack of control somewhat. Yes, you want that smooth transition. And that's something you got to work with. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to do it right now. You can cut and gobble your light. You're going to have to Google those terms. Now, I can't give it all away. Just a kiss of light, right? Just a kiss of light. And as you can see, I've got the lights at 12 and 1 o'clock in his eyes. That's the first thing. Matter of fact, I'm going to position those catch lights as I'm setting up the photograph. I'm going to position those catch lights because I know all of my technical friends are going to be looking for that. Because they want to see where the light is coming from. And that's how we tell. I'm going to make sure that I can see up underneath his chin. I don't have any irregular shadows due to bad lighting. So as you can see, I created a pattern on his face. There's a triangle, his jawline. I want to I want to emphasize that, and I'm turning him this way because my this is my son, by the way. My son takes after me. He has a a, a you see how he has a wide nose. Yes, see how he has a wide nose. So I'm trying to not turn him to the side so it looks bigger, but I'm trying to flatten out his nose while showing off the shape of his face. And I photographed him like this because it's actually pretty difficult to do. All right. Minimal editing here, you guys. I'm not real big on editing. I, I, I love to, to just bring it right out of the camera. Now, you guys know I've been shooting a long time. This was actually, this image I'm showing here, this was actually an image that I shot at one of my very first on location workshops um, I want to ask you guys thank you thank you Mike I want to ask you guys a question and I want to see how well you understand what you see is this natural lighting or strobe lighting so if it's natural put in one if it's strobe put in two let's go The world is a lie. Yeah, photographs do lie. Both. 
two. Okay. That's pretty interesting that a lot of you guys would say new. Ah, MJ. Yeah. Okay. Have no idea, just guessed. Okay. Um, that's interesting that a lot of you guys would say strobe because you know I shoot mostly with strobe. This is actually uh, a reflector, a gold reflector. And um, as you can see, it's just right off to. Uh, the one o'clock or, or the uh, 11 o'clock. Yeah, the, no, the 11 o'clock. It's just off to the 11 o'clock, the reflector's there. But this is with the reflector. And I'm gonna, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I wanna show you, I wanna show you, um, I'm gonna show you an image and I'm gonna make a comment on it. But as, if, if you look at a lot of the images that, I show, that I've shown you tonight, they're very masculine. And you know what, you guys, when, a, when someone is masculine, you may have to light them that way. It's very important to understand what masculine lighting is versus feminine lighting. And that's when you start getting in, getting into the whole natural light. This is a natural light photo, so it would be a number one. Yes. Looked in his eyes. Yep. Big Dirty, what's up? So keep that in mind, you guys. You got to be able to go both ways. You got to be bilater bilateral. <laughs> I don't know. I just try to make, you know, I like to make up words, lightero. So you got to be by lightero. So you got to be able to light both ways, natural and with a strobe, because you never know what could happen out on location. So that was, that was my attempt at trying to make up a word by lightero. <laughs> All right. So as you guys know, in the bomb squad community, we post images and sometimes we always get a always get a lot of questions about Keith. Why don't you ever post? And um, sometimes it just comes from people there. You critique their photo and they're upset or whatever, or they think they're just a, a, as good as you are as a photographer. Or whatever the case may be, people's like, well, you don't even post photos. I get that a lot, and I don't get mad because of it. You know, I just it, it actually amuses me because my work is all over the place. Right? Matter of fact, you might be driving down the freeway and see some of it. But here's the thing that I want you to know. Occasionally, we're going to post some images. The reason why we don't post a lot of images because it's got to be perfect. We don't post just to post. We post because it is perfect. And we also have the clearance to do it. So Sheila, Sheila Morgan Gibson, you guys know who she is. She's worked with me for the last seven years. She has also studied photography with a lot of different people um, one being Don Giannotti. How many of you guys are familiar with Don Giannotti? He's an old school guy. Um, probably one of, and I think he's ranked as a PDN uh, teacher. He's ranked in the top 10 for photography teachers. Don Giannotti. How many of you guys are familiar with him? He's actually a really good teacher. The guy translates information very well. Well, anyway, Sheila made this image. And I've watched the progression, and she submitted. Sheila actually has submitted a lot of images to me over the last couple years in her in her progression. And um, we take a vote, literally. Should you post this? It's never haphazard post an image. It's like, well, you think this is good enough to post? And what we're doing is, can it stand up to anyone's scrutiny? That's what we're looking for. And here it is. Now I'm going to tell you this this photo. Um, is very well done and if I had to say any one thing about it I would just comment on the disproportion of the ears but technically this is a great image it is the, the exposure the skin tone is proper um, the background I mean this is this is insane I love it and she used what's called an eye lighter and there's a proper way. I'm going to show you what an eye lighter diagram looks like. Um, she used the eye lighter setup. And the first thing that I look for in any photo, you guys, the very first thing I look for is texture. If you're photographing a person, I'm going to look for the texture all the way around. Okay. And then second, I'm going to look for the light. What is the light doing? Is it a hard change of light? If it is with me, that's going to be kind of not a good thing unless there's a really good reason for it. But if I see gradual transition in the light, I'm going to say to myself, ah, that's okay. I like that. Uh, I'm going to look underneath the chin to see how the shadows are controlled. I'm going to look at the positioning. Is it three quarters, two thirds? 
Uh, what kind of shot is it? Is the light masculine? Is it broad? I mean, why? What's the shape of the face? Those are all the questions that I'm actually asking myself. And everything that I'm telling you is everything that you can research on the internet and everything I'm going to tell you, you should probably know to create a proper a proper portrait. Um, I'm looking at his shoulder positioning. I'm even looking at his necklace to make sure that it is straight. And where is it cutting off at? Because maybe I want to see more of that necklace. But the framing here is good. So, and she left the big part of the necklace right at the top. This is great. Yes. Thank you, JP. And Sheila, um, is Sheila Morgan on here? Because she did a great job on this photo. And I'm going to tell you right now, you might be thinking, well, Keith, she works with you. You're being soft on her. I'm going to tell you that I'm on 10 times 10 if I know you personally and you send an image my way. There is no mercy for you because you know what? I'm not going to expect any mercy because from you, when I send my photo, and here's the reason why, I needed to stand up to the utmost scrutiny. So if someone says something, I already know. I already know. And if it wasn't intentional, I'm out. I'm not even going to submit the image. So that's the benefit, you guys. And this is the job that she did that was really good. Now let's take a look at this eyeliner situation. And so you guys can see exactly what Sheila probably have done. Because we've actually walked, we've actually tested this setup. And I'm going to tell you, when Sheila created this image, she just didn't go in the studio and do it. We actually went in and measured up everything one day from the center to the center to the subject. Now here's the highlighter. I don't have an highlighter here. I just couldn't find the, the graphics for it, but there's that big square thing in the front of the, the light is a reflector. It doesn't have to be an highlighter, but um, I'm gonna tell you it's gotta be an highlighter. Westcott makes it. It's a, one of the best tools I think they've introduced. It's roughly about $300. It's not inexpensive, but um, it's a great tool for bringing up light into the, the neck area. And here's the thing. You can use a regular reflector. You can use all kind of stuff. Um, but Sheila did it with an highlighter so she could... Oh, there she is right there. Sheila, you might want to watch the replay on this. Um, so Sheila used the highlighter to create that perfect catch, rounded catch light in the eye. It's centered. So if you go in the bomb squad and you look at her image, you're going to notice that it was centered. The, 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 the highlighter is in the perfect place. Um, those are V-flats. So what we want to do is we want to gobble off or we want to cut off the light that may spill backwards. And I don't have this to scale. Normally I'd have the subject forward of the V-flats, but um, I just I didn't do it here. I think I'm a better photographer than I'm a designer. But um, I would have the subject just a little bit more forward. But I wanted to give you the idea. And the backlights, depending on the power that you're shooting at, can be oh there it is matter of fact mj is that the um is that the um video that's got i hope that's the video link that you put in there because that is one of the best and most precise videos that i've seen on how to use the highlighter so mj if that was it let me know um the background can meter about f18 oh it's just a photo okay um oh there's a photo of the okay perfect um, the background can meter at F18, 16, somewhere around there. And it also depends on the amount of power that you're using and the type of equipment. So you can probably do it at F11 as well. It just depends on how you set it up. So F-stops are going to be subjective here. And I'm going to tell you, not as important as the measurements that, that you have the subject at, off the background, from the light, from the center of the light to the center of the, the highlighter, to the person, um, to their face. All that is measured and um, it's measured precisely. If you do it right and you line it up correctly, you're going to have the perfect image like Sheila did here. And I'm going to bring that up. Um, I, this is one of those times where I wish I could just enlarge. Let me see if, matter of fact, I'm going to see if I can enlarge just really quick. I'm going to go in here and just do some work on the fly, you guys, so you can see these catch lights in here because I think she did it. She, she did an amazing job at getting them in there perfect. So on the fly right now, I'm just making an adjustment for the image. And I'm going to zoom in right now. Hang on just a quick second so you guys can see that catch light. And 
you'll see exactly what I mean by the eye lighter. Okay, here we go. So if you look at the eyes, you'll notice that there's like a circular, a half, uh, a half circular catch light at the bottom of the eye. That's the eye lighter. And there's enough spacing between the top and the bottom. And then, oh, by the way, Sheila, you should, uh, maybe his eyes could use just a bit of touch up. Um, but she pretty much pulled this straight out of the camera. So, um, but yeah, once she touches it up a little bit, I think is this is this is good to go as it is. And then the catch lights are at one o'clock. You guys see that? Throw up a Wi-Fi if you see everything that I just mentioned. Put in a Wi-Fi for me. So again, here's what I want you to know. Um, Sheila Morgan Gibson. She's in the bomb squad or Sheila Morgan. She's in the uh, in the bomb squad. She's the, one of the admins posted this image. And not only have we worked together to to bring her images to this point, but she's studied with Don Giannotti. He's a he's a, a, a one of the best teachers in the country. Uh, and, and I'm going to tell you, it's it's a commitment when you're working with them. It's a serious commitment, but he's one of the best teachers in the country. And uh, I got to tell you, this is definitely he would be proud of this. And I think Matthew commented on this as well. Matthew, Matthew's comment on this photo was timeless. And um, yeah, you know, they do, uh, Mike. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, so Mike brings up a really good point. If you're um, going to submit for your PPA, um, well, not for PPA, but I think if you're going to do a print comp, they're probably going to deduct points from multiple catch lights. You got to have 11 or one o'clock catch lights. So they will. But that's an easy fix here because you just go in and clone it out. But um, which one? Don Giannotti. Uh, can somebody put his name up in the scope? Don Giannotti. Definitely. He's a, he's an old school guy. Old school. Um, and, you know, I love old school photography instructors because they're going to teach you the nuts and bolts of what you need to do without impeding your creativity. All right. Any questions? I'm going to take you back to this other diagram because I want to show you something. And I'm going to ch I'm going to challenge you guys as well. So I'm going to take you back to this other diagram. Um, when I first started really learning about portrait photography, there was this this guy named Dave Ledford, Dave Ledford, old Navy guy, um, na old Navy photographer. He was in the Navy and he was a photographer for approximately 35 years. He taught me how to shoot portraits with umbrellas. And his philosophy was, you need to be, there it is right there, there's Don's name, you need to be able to shoot a portrait with anything. You need to be able to replicate light, lighting patterns, shapes, with anything, literally. So we spent probably about three or four months shooting portraits with umbrellas. And that's why I guess I have like this bias to umbrellas. Because, you know, that was my first introduction to, to shooting a portrait. Matter of fact, I didn't even use soft boxes. I knew more about an umbrella, how to close them down. Matter of fact, Zach Arias, another one of the, another one of the top 10 PDN instructors, um, would close the umbrella down and create dramatic light with it. So, you know, that's, that's how deep you can get with it. They would actually close it down and make it more directional. So you can do a lot with an umbrella. Now, it's going to give you a wide coverage. Um, there's a, a wedding photographer. Uh, his name is slipping my mind. There's one of the greatest wedding photographers that ever lived. Um, his name slipping my mind. But it's going to come to me. He would take an umbrella and put it back about 20 feet off the the backdrop 20 feet off the backdrop and would f use that as fill so those are the kind of guys that i studied photography with and um about any questions before we get up out of here you guys any questions i'll take you back over to sheila's image there's the catch lights um i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna zoom this out so you guys can get a feel for the, her image and what she did 
And you can see this if you go, if you join the bomb squad, if you're not in the bomb squad community, you have to join and we will look through your, your, your portfolio, I mean your portfolio, we'll look through your website to make sure that, you know, you're just not slipping and tripping. This is a closed group and it's a, it's a private group. So we're, we're, we're pretty strict about it, but there's Sheila's image right there. I think it was probably, it's well done. And I'm going to tell you, um, her and, um, who else on here? Steve, where's Steve at? Is Steve on here? Steve, are, are you still on here? Steve Perry. Um, definitely. There he is right there. Very promising. Like when I, when I look at, when I see you guys pushing out work, I mean, Really good stuff. The photog's name, yes. Um, oh, Monty Zucker. That's what I was trying to say. Thanks. See, you just jogged my memory. Monty Zucker. I studied my, a lot of Monty Zucker's work when I was shooting weddings. Matter of fact, um, Dave Ledford, the photographer I was telling you about, he had some old Monty Zucker videos, and I used to watch them. These guys would light with with uh, bare bulb. They, they would light an image bare bulb. They didn't use modifiers. They didn't even have modifiers back then. Everything was direction of light, catching spill. And that's really how I learned. Um, Monty Zucker, Joe McNally, you guys, I want you to, you, you, you probably see me tweeting this stuff. You see us tweeting back and forth. But Joe, McNa Joe McNally, I think modern day is one of the best photographers that ever lived. Modern day today, right now. This guy is not only technically technically proficient at, at what he does, but he just understands how to apply light in any situation, in any situation. And those are the people that I study because ultimately that's where I want to land as a photographer. So pick somebody. Is he? Yeah, he. Yeah, he is on Creative Live. He also has a program out. And uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because he really is a a great. I, I know Joe. He's he's really a great guy like yes he bosses it up with the flash he's a great guy like seriously he's like that all the nikon ambassador on 1000 for real so um if you want to be really good at your photography the thing that i'm going to tell you to do is to hang around with the best people because it'll rub off on you some kind of way all right so I gave you some names, Monty Zucker, Joe McNally, Dave Ledford. You're not going to find too much on him. He's one of those guys that just didn't do a lot of self-promotion, owned a studio. If you didn't know him locally, you didn't know him. But these are the photographers that I've studied. Don Giannotti. Um, these are the people that are going to, it's, it's not just listening to me and what I say. Um, it's not just me. It's how many of these pro photographers do you have in your toolbox that you can reach out to and and, and, and grab some tools and use them? That's what it really is, you guys. You, you got to get you, you, you got to study people, not the, the photographers in the last 10 years. I'm not saying that they're not good, but this is a complicated game. This is complicated. These guys have 35, 40 years of experience. Uh, the Ralph Romagueras, they've seen a lot. So that's where you're going to get those nuggets of gold. So dig in and go way back. Yes, look at history. Look at photographers in the last 25 years and see what you can pull from there. Is this all making sense for you guys? Drop in. If this was a good scope for you, uh, put in 7.7 .7 for me. 7 .7. 7.7. 7.7. Any questions? You guys have any questions? I got Joel Grimes. Um, thank you. Thank you, Amber. You know, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Joel Grimes because a lot of people don't know um, a lot about Joel Grimes. They just know that, you know, he does really good composites. But um, here, here's what you got to know about Joel Grimes. Joel Grimes actually has an art history degree. From Arizona State. Like, it, it's not just, okay, I do good composites. Tony, Cor Tony Corbell is another good one. Uh, old school like you're gonna get some nuts and bolts that's the guy right they're not gonna be you're not gonna go in there and get razzle dazzled and all that kind of stuff they're gonna teach you 
the Tony Corbells. Um, Joel Grimes has a history with photography. It's not just he's not just a guy that does composites. He has a history, and that's the thing that you got to understand about a lot of these photographers. Any questions? All right, so let's go. Uh, I'm going to take you guys over to this one site. Let me. I'm going to bring it up for just just to, hold on, just a quick second. Any questions before we dive out of here? So, you guys know that I do a broadcast 7 o'clock and 7 p.m. And, you know, I've been noticing, um, been noticing just a lot of differences, a lot of variation in, um, you know, I've been noticing, um, been noticing been noticing a lot of variation in in people joining in on the scopes so you know i started digging into it like why is this happening and the thing that i'm figuring out and and, and one of the conclusions that i'm making is if people aren't at home or they're not on a wi-fi they're not going to watch because come the telephone companies are just killing us on these data plans I mean, you're going if you're going over your minutes if you even if you have unlimited they're throttling you down so you get mad and you don't watch it's frustrating it's even frustrating for me i'm on wi-fi right now i'm not even broadcasting off my telephone because i'm so disgusted with the the wireless connection and what the telephone companies are doing when they throttle us and throttle us means that they just start reducing our bandwidth without even telling us you just start you can't connect and all of this kind of stuff i don't know maybe it works in our favor in some kind of way i have no idea but the thing that i want to tell you uh, the, my solution to that is i'm going to start podcasting so if you go to podcast.keithbdixon.live you'll find and, and i'm going to show i'm going to show this to you i'm going to I'm trying to pull it up really quick here. Give me a second. All right. There we go. Okay, I'm going to share this with you guys so you'll know. If you're missing the information, I don't want you to give up because I know that can be frustrating, but here's where you can find a lot of the rebroadcast and new material, new content. So here it is right here. This is the Keith B. Dixon Zone podcast, and um, I haven't officially launched it yet. I've been talking about it because I'm still building it, and I'm still working on the iTunes part of it, but here it is right here. So the eight minutes of inspiration, don't make any excuses, and it, it's going to cover just about all the areas that we normally have you can download it to your phone and listen to it whenever you want or you can watch it um, right there on the spot so there it is right there key hacks for event photographers this part this broadcast um, I may edit it and uh, put it on here because what I do is I edit out all the periscope stuff so that we just get to the point but here it is right here um, I don't know if you guys know this but uh, making your camera uh, automatic functions work for you I talk about that and it's approximately 20 minutes or so and I just talk about it not what it does as much as how you use it and and that's when I talk about functions and camera functions I'm gonna talk about how do you use it how's it gonna work for you because sometimes we need to know the end game not what it's gonna do but we need to know the end game so there it is um, so we're going to build this up and I think when I get about 10 or 20 broadcasts on here I'm going to officially launch that and there's also a biography page so if you click through you can see that and you can subscribe here as well so you can subscribe so there's my my bio page and if you need to find me online here's all the ways to do it that's a lot of stuff huh so there's all the everything that I do subscribe yeah and, and subscribe definitely subscribe and um, at some point I may offer you guys know I have the 90 PT and um, all that that kind of stuff I'm gonna create a, a subscription based service here it's gonna be roughly about four dollars and ninety nine cents and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some content that is unique 
that you could that, that one you could use for four dollars and ninety nine cents and it'll be monthly so I'll be creating a monthly subscription um, I don't think that'll happen till way after the conference but I'm trying to get this going before the conference you guys there it is right there and then if you go to YouTube I didn't I'm broadcasting on YouTube live right now so um, and then I'll rebroadcast this. Here is the uh, YouTube page, and as you can see, you guys, I'm I'm ramping it up, and this has all the broadcast. I think it's just easier to get to. Most people watch YouTube versus Periscope TV, um, although more people are starting to watch Periscope TV. But here you can get everything. So and this, I think we're live. Let me see. Uh, I don't know if I should probably do this. Uh, Let's see. I'm doing a live broadcast of YouTube right now. So um, there it is. Any questions before we get up out of here, you guys? Any questions before we get up out of here? Any questions about lighting? All right. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. I definitely appreciate it. And... Thank you for tuning in. My name is Keith B. Dixon, commercial photographer all day, every day. You guys, yes. Thank you, Daryl. Oh, you just got in, Rome. Oh, man, you're welcome. Rome, you definitely got to watch the replay on this. Holy smokes. Hey, Mark, what's going on? Good to see you too, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. Thank you, Faith. Faith is dropping bombs. Faith, did we indoctrinate you in the bomb squad? You're welcome, Sheila. You're welcome all day. And you guys engage Sheila. Sheila is like a book of knowledge. You know, if I need to research something very specific, but wait, hold on before I get up out of here. You know, Sheila runs electron microscopes for a living. That's what she does. That's her day job. She runs scientific tests. Her and Mike, oh, I got two scientists in the crew, right? That's what she does for a living. So she knows a lot about a lot. So, all right, you guys, I will see you tomorrow morning. Morning motivation off the top of the dome. Uh, I'm posting the um, I'm I'm posting the uh, eight minutes, you guys. So the the daily eight. I'm posting that late because I'm getting to it late. So the, the the idea is to post that at twelve noon, no later than twelve, and uh, we're gonna get there. So I'm just trying to figure out the workflow on that, and there it is. All right, you guys, peace out. My name is Keith B. Dixon. I will catch you tomorrow morning, 730-35, morning motivation, off the top of the dome. Be inspired. Be motivated. Let's go.